Good morning. I'm the Reverend Patrick Evans of the Southport Methodist Circuit. I'm delighted to welcome you to our act of worship for Sunday the 12th of July. Today is Action for Children Sunday when we celebrate the work of the charity Action for Children, formerly known as MCH, Methodist Children's Homes. So what sort of week have you had? How do you feel as we gather together, albeit separately, in our own homes? However your week has been, don't put on any pretense for God, for he knows us all. So come, just as you are. For God says, you're never too young, never too old, to be part of my creation. Come near, all who are weak, all who are afraid, all who know their need of me. Lord, meet us where we are, meet us in our need. We give our lives to you. So shake off the dust of tiredness, come and be refreshed. Shake off the dust of complacency, come and be challenged. Shake off the dust of hesitancy. Come and be encouraged to be Christ's hands and feet in our world today. Tony Young will now lead us in our opening song, after which Paul Taylor will lead us in prayer.
Good morning. My name is Paul Taylor and I'm a member of PPW, but I also work as a hospital chaplain at Aintree Hospital. And this is where we gather uh, for prayer before we go out on our work uh, on the wards. And this is our chapel. Listen to these words from Nehemiah. Stand up and praise the Lord your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them, you give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. And so we come in prayer as we begin our time together. And this is a prayer by Alison Smith, the fostering marketing officer and Action for Children Christian Network. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bring healing to any child or young person who has been the victim of abuse or neglect. They are your children and have been called into your wonderful light. Show them that you see them and know what they are going through. Show them that you are right beside them, no matter how terrible the situation. We pray that you will know that they can lean on you. Open our eyes, Lord, to see any potential signs of abuse and remove every form of ignorance from us. Give these children and young people hope and provide healing in their body, soul and mind and ease their suffering, Father, and cause a complete restoration in their lives. Amen. And so we come to a time when we can just come before God and to say sorry. God's mercy is deeper than the depths of the sea and God's grace is wider than the whole of the earth. Trusting in that mercy and that grace, let us make our confession before God and each other. And so we just keep a few moments of quiet when we can think back over this last week, think about perhaps the things that we've said and now regret, or the time may be when we stayed silent, when we should have spoken up, for the actions that we've taken that have maybe caused hurt, or perhaps we stood and took no action when the right thing would have been to. And so I invite you to say these words with me or to just listen to them. Holy God, we open our hearts to you this day and offer the truth of our lives, the fear that stifles us, the prejudice that blinds us, the ignorance that hobbles us, the doubt that plagues us. Help us, we pray, that we will find courage in unlikely place. See the world with new and gracious eyes, Move to those places where love is needed. And to have faith that you are with us 
We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So hear the good news. We are forgiven. We are set free to go out into the world and to be loving and gracious and hopeful people of God. Amen. And as part of God's family, we say our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. On the 9th of July, 1869, two boys were welcomed into the first children's home, which was housed in a renovated stable in Church Street, Waterloo in London, by Methodist minister Thomas Bowman Stevenson, who had been moved by the plight of children living on the street in London. And so Methodist children's homes came into being, and the rest, as they say, is history. In September 2008, the charity became known as Action for Children, with the name change reflecting a transition from children's homes to a wider range of services seeking to support children and families within their own neighbourhoods. Southport had its own MCH home for many years, with dedicated staff working tirelessly to support those in need. I've invited one of those dedicated members of staff, David Potts, from Leyland Road Methodist Church, who used to work for MCH to share his thoughts on how the charity has transitioned and developed. Yeah, I started working with MCH back in the mid 80s, early mid 80s. Um, I got involved because I was on the Association of Friends and then I'd been made redundant so I went into working as a residential worker at West Dean Children's Home in Southport. Um, my wife and I were already uh, foster carers so I'd had some experience of working with children um, as well as having a family form. And it was at this time that I realised that being in a residential home wasn't necessarily the best environment for young people to be in because you had a mixture of people from different backgrounds, different problems, different experiences and you put them all together whereby they formed their own little subculture which wasn't necessarily healthy for them. I think NCH had realised this, NCH as it was at the time, um, and they had already started branching out into forming a creative family centres, working within the community. We continued working with these young people and some of them became teenagers and when they were leaving this is when major problems happened because a lot of the care that was financed by local authorities ceased but it didn't mean to say that they no longer had any problems but people tended to think instead of the children who they'd seen in children's home being young children who are oh, bless them let's look after them it became they're a terror in society and it was only because they were having problems handling the change from being in an institution to having to look after themselves. We found that we were voluntarily supporting those who left West Dean and moved into the community but creating or collecting funding was a problem uh, and so it couldn't be sustained. I think NCH realised the problems they were having at the time and that is why they started even more projects in the community. They were working with young people who had um, 
abuse issues, either drug or alcohol, or experiencing abuse at the hands of others. And they tended to focus more on that, rather than just creating an environment where they could sustain living, basically, just so that they were um, being looked after and cared for, but not necessarily developing to the full extent of what the needs were for those children. I was particularly involved with a few of these young people moving into care. I found that supporting them was difficult because, I mean, they had no experience of anything from budgeting, you know, how to create a budget for just food or things like that, or even what foods to buy. And it was obvious that more education was needed and this wasn't always possible within the environment of a children's home. So NCH, as it developed, became NCH Action for Children. Um, the change of name was to cover the fact that they were working from the community because they found this to be more effective because they could still be within their own home environment possibly or in foster care and far more one-to-one -one attention was available without the distraction of others around who had equal problems but maybe of a different type. So I could see why NCH were branching out. There was still a need for some children because of fact that they were at risk in the community as young children to be in residential care but it was reduced it wasn't necessarily that they all had to be in residential care and that's where the transition started. My mum had overdosed and I found her because I remember for months thinking it was my fault I went to school thinking she died. I became homeless when I was 18. I'd kind of given up at this point because my mental health went downhill as well. So like in 2013, I'd overdosed. I felt like everything was crumbling around me and like the tighter I held, the looser it became. When I was living in my car, funnily enough, the thing that scared me the most was the windows because I always get worried that someone will pop up. It got really cold. I didn't know like, how my body would deal with the temperature change. I kept going to ASDA, I was at ASDA at 3am because I needed to pee <laughs> and it's 24 hours, like, it's little things like that, like, I still want to keep my dignity, like. At that point in my life, I felt so lost. I got involved with Action for Children and they were going to put me in my own flat. They wondered whether assisted accommodation would be a better option. You're just supported a lot more to then be ready to get your own place. If I feel bad at 3am, I can come down and speak to somebody if they've got night staff on. I know there's times I've felt I've had nobody, but being here, I always now feel like I've got somebody, there's always somebody I could go to because there's always somebody about. My confidence has grown, I'm not having many panic attacks, like my mental health is so much better. It's my life, I'm in control now. I'm finally starting to enjoy things again, like I feel like I'm finally living life now. Today, Action for Children is an independent charity employing 7,000 people supported by 4,000 volunteers. Last year, they helped 387,000 children and their families in the UK. Locally, Action for Children has a number of projects. There is the Merseyside Junior Mentoring Scheme based in Knowsley, where primary schools in the north of Liverpool can refer children who are withdrawn, may be socially isolated or displaying behavioural difficulties. Perhaps they have poor concentration and are having difficulty socialising with their peers and are at risk of developing antisocial and offending behaviour. In Halewood, there is the big cherry tree nursery based at Holy Family School and caters for children from birth through to 11 years of age. It's open from 8 till 6 every day of the year with a team uh, of people who offer a breakfast club and an after-school club. And they also offer a holiday during all of the school holidays. In Wigan, operating from Worsley Mains Methodist Church, there is the MST Centre. MST is multi systemic therapy which is an intensive home-based family and community treatment it lasts for about five months to support parents and carers to bring positive change where serious antisocial behavior exists 
for 11 to 17 year olds, especially for those at risk of entering care or custody, associating with other offenders having drug and alcohol problems and displaying aggressive behaviours. Action for Children is also one of the UK's largest fostering and adoption agencies and details on how you can support the work for the charity will be on the screen at the end of our service. Barry Stewart is now going to bring us our Bible reading, after which G. McKenna will open up God's Word for us. Good morning, I'm Barry from Victoria. Our reading this morning is from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They asked, Where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Then they scoffed, He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon. And his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honoured everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their disbelief. Then Jesus went from village to village, teaching the people. And he called his twelve disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. He told them to take nothing for their journey except a walking stick. No food, no traveller's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals, but not to take a change of clothes. Wherever you go, he said, stay in the same house until you leave town. But if any place refuses to welcome you or to listen to you, shake the dust from, it, from your feet as you leave to show that you have abandoned these people to their fate. So the disciples went out, telling everyone they met to repent of their sins and to turn to God. And they cast out many demons and healed many sick people anointing them with olive oil. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Amen. Today's passages, and I'm just going to concentrate on verses 7 to 13, which underline the need for a deep sense of humility and dependence on God and on one another, to work with God's power to bring signs of the coming kingdom. We like to sense our giftedness and our own ability, but often it is the stretched limits of our weakness and vulnerability that we are most effective channels of God's power as disciples. This is one of my continuing battles. It might be yours too. More of Jesus, less of me. I've died to myself so many times, yet I still find I'm alive and kicking. Yet I do know those words of weakness and vulnerability to be true. I also know that we serve a gracious master that is so aware of our heart's desire to be faithful and humble servants. His presence and his anointing are with us as we share the good news of Jesus. The scripture says, when there are two or three gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The passage Barry read for us earlier tells us Jesus was limited by the unbelief of those he grew up with. I think this reminds us that there will not be universal acceptance of the good news of Jesus or the ability to demonstrate everywhere signs of God's work among us. It's interesting, isn't it, 
that Jesus sends the disciples out two by two. The power of two is an amazing thing. Have you ever noticed how much more you can accomplish when you have someone to help you to do something? Make a bed, put up a fence, paint a room, or even sorting out a problem or thinking through an idea. We were created by God to work together, not to be alone in a vacuum. Throughout the New Testament, we see that the disciples functioned. They were never alone. When Jesus sent them out to be witnesses, they were sent out by two. Jesus even sent two disciples to untie the coat and bring it back to him. The disciples were never alone. When not divided into twos, they were often out in groups, so they were always able to strengthen and encourage each other. I'm just going to sidetrack for a moment. We must remember that this was obviously before the death of Jesus on that dreadful cross. Before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and before Jesus ascended into heaven. You can read about it in Acts 1 verse 4. But he went to be with the Father. He told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for he, they were to receive the power when the Holy Spirit came upon them. Without a doubt, ministering, fellowshipping is beyond important. I mention this only to remind ourselves that when we are alone, if we love Jesus and have asked him into our lives post-Easter, post-Ascension and post-Pentecost, then the Holy Spirit lives within us and we are already too. Not helping to make the beds or pay to room, much, much better than that. He is with us every minute of every day. A few years ago, I was on holiday in Burgundy. We'd been to Tessie for the Sunday service and we were enjoying the sunshine walking through the streets of nearby Clooney. When I found myself looking into the window of a chocolatier, the chocolates looked amazing. There was a chocolate fountain in the window. Lovely, tempting, bubbling chocolate. There was a child. He was with his parents. And he looked to make sure his parents were busy and not watching them. And they were not. He promptly stuck his finger into the chocolate fountain. And the words came to me, Taste and see that the Lord is good. So I say to you this morning, if you do not know Jesus, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you are interested to discover more about Jesus and what it means to be a follower of him, please do not hesitate to contact either the Reverend Patrick Evans, who has been leading our service this morning, or the Reverend Marianne Kent. Details on the Southbrook Circuit website. They would love to chat with you and tell you more about what it means and to know Jesus in a personal way. Well, back to the plot. Can you imagine Jesus told the friends, his disciples, to take nothing for the journey, except a walking stick? No food, gosh. When I'm going on a journey, I pack a lunch and I'm always desperate to eat it as soon as I cross the boundary. So that must have been hard. No traveller's bag, that's difficult. No money even. Jesus did, however, allow them to wear sandals, but not a change of clothes. Mm, in that heat. But what he did give to the disciples is something you just can't get anywhere. Jesus gave them the authority to cast out evil spirits. In another translation, it says, Jesus gave the disciples power to cast out demons. No food, no traveller's bag, 
no money, no change of clothes. Yet what he did give the two by twos, the pairs, was the power to do the work of the kingdom. To the people who saw the disciples, they may have looked like the cynics, so cool because the Greek word scion means dog. And in a world where dogs would be more likely to be vermin than family pets, they had the reputation of barking at the rich and respectable. Some people, seeing a pair of Jesus' disciples coming into a village, might have thought they were those sort of people. But they would have soon learned otherwise. The similarity between the cynics and Jesus' disciples wasn't more than skin deep. Cynics definitely didn't cast out evil spirits. Mark makes this the main things the disciples were meant to do. Not that it was simply a way of healing distressed souls. It was, as I think we have already seen, a sign that God's kingdom was breaking in at last. That's why it was so urgent and they had to take minimal extra bits and pieces and to rely on the locals, feeding them and freeing them up to do the job in hand. They were the kingdom heralds, the outriders warning people that something was about to happen. Whereas the cynics didn't think anything was going to happen, just that the present was an, in an unredeemable mess. The message the disciples were to give was that everyone should get ready for it. This was the message of Jesus. Mark, in his Gospel, always at a pace, focuses on the speedy mission. If people didn't accept the message, move on. No time to waste. On to the next place. And woe to those who have missed their chance. There is a huge amount I'd love to explore. Jesus sharing of the mission with the twelve, choosing to delegate, how these actions could be a symbolic act of witness to Israel about God's urgent timing, Israel's history, the world's history. I'm running out of time, but just to say, off go the twelve disciples, symbolic of God's renewed people, driving out evil before them. I hope this isn't too strong a leap for you, but just as those who have worked for Action for Children in these days are driving out evil on a daily basis, the evil of poverty, horrendous acts of verbal and sexual abuse, which includes child prostitution, modern day slavery to name but two. Today our hearts and minds focus on Action for Children, helping thousands of children and families who depend on them and on us for support. God has sent us in a two by two partnership to ensure children who would otherwise suffer neglect have a safe and stable home, to support families caring for a disabled beloved child, to support young carers who place their needs before the needs of others who depend on them. To ensure any child who needs help gets help. Lord Jesus, help us to see that we can be in partnership, in a two by two partnership in the fight against evil. Help to bring the kingdom of God into dark situations by our prayers by our giving and by our doing. In Jesus' name we pray you will empower us. Amen.
Whatever you are, let us join in prayer together for those in greatest need. Lord, teach us to pray, to listen to you, to speak to you, and to act for you. Sovereign God of compassion and care, of wholeness and healing, of forgiveness and love and hope, we pray for your world, broken and fractured by greed, selfishness, hatred and violence. Have mercy on us, we pray. Inspire and guide us by your Holy Spirit to help bring about transformation and reconciliation. Help us to work and pray for justice and unity and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, the world has been quiet because of quarantine, but racism and violence, violence still bring turmoil to many. Lord, help us to remember that you understand our suffering. We pray for a world without violence, where caring for each other is the order of the day, and where everyone and everything is loved unconditionally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we place into your hands the things we cannot do, for we know we always can trust you. Heavenly Father, of great love, awesome in power, comfort your precious children by your Holy Spirit. Breathe your, your life and healing into dyed, tired or damaged limbs. Revive the faith of those who are weak. Almighty God, you are a God who provides. Give food to those who are hungry. You are the God who rescues bring freedom to the captives. O Lord our God, give us your aid, for we are needy. Give us your strength, for we are helpless. Give us hope in you, for we are in despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we place into your hands the things that we've been through, for we know we always can trust you. Lord, on this Action for Children Sunday, we pray for them and their work. We pray for all the families and all the people that the charity helps and pray your blessing on each one of them. As we think of them, we pray for those struggling with debt with physical health or mental health and pray that they will know your help and peace. Lord, remove any barriers from us that prevent us from reaching out in your love and with your love. We thank you for their staff and volunteers and pray that they will be given help and strength Give them the energy and enthusiasm they need to lovingly support those in most need. 
And we pray for the, the leadership of Action for Children. Give them your wisdom, your guidance as they plan for the future of the charity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you've called us to be your people and to share in the ministry of your Son. Jesus, be the centre, be our source, be our light, be our hope, be our song, be the fire in our hearts, be the wind in our sails. Lord God, give your guidance to our government. Only you can do that. Faithful God, when you call, help us to respond. When you speak, help us to hear. When you ask, help us to answer. When you lead, help us to follow. When you send, help us to go. When you challenge, help us to listen. When you give, may we receive and help us to love as you first loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us, we pray, ears that are open to the cries of those in most need, hearts that are eager to respond, voices that are ready to speak out for the oppressed and hands that are active in sharing your love. We pray, in the name of Christ our Lord, who is with us in all that we face. May this prayer and every prayer not be the end of our work, but be the beginning, but the beginning. For we ask all our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you to all of our contributors today, both on the screen and behind the scenes. Most of all, thank you for being with us. As our service draws to an end, may the Lord walk with us hand in hand, strengthening us to be strong for others, enriching us 
to meet the needs of those around us. And may the blessing of God our Father, Jesus his Son, and the Holy Spirit, our companion, be ours forever. Amen. One of the families, it's an 11 year old daughter that I work with and she is in general quite worried about their family's financial situation. Before even the virus hit, you know, the dad worked away and he was on quite a good income and then, you know, his work dried up and they, they went on to benefit. So they had to kind of reconsider their budget. They didn't budget for the children being home 24-7. They didn't budget for the extra coal. They didn't budget for the extra electricity, the extra food. It was basically getting to a choice of either heating or eating. I think the work that Action for Children are doing just now is really important because there will be a huge knock-on effect. This is going to go on for such a long time and there will be an awful lot of young people that will be needing our support.